Hello, crisis in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antiochian Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Wednesday, November 25th, 2020, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 3, verses 23 through 29, and chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Brethren, before faith came, we were confined under the law, kept under restraint until faith should be revealed. So that the law was our custodian until Christ came, that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we no longer are under a custodian. For in Christ Jesus you are all sons through faith. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring and heirs according to the promise. I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no better than a slave, though he is the owner of all the estate. But he is under guardians and trustees until the date set by the father. So with us, when we were children, we were slaves to the elemental spirits of the universe. But when the time had fully come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And today's Gospel reading is from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 5, verses 24 through 34. At that time, a great crowd followed Jesus and thronged him. And there was a woman who had had an issue of blood for twelve years, who had suffered much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of the reports about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If I touch even his garments, I shall be made well. And immediately the hemorrhage ceased, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving that power had come out of him, immediately turned around in the crowd, and he asked, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see everyone surrounding you, and not yet you're asking, Who touched you? But the woman, knowing what had done to her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. So today in the Orthodox Church, we remember a great luminary of our church, Catherine the Great. Catherine was a very educated woman, lived in the Sinai region in Egypt, and actually was known very well for her great knowledge and also her very intense and highest love for Christ. She would oftentimes be set against the greatest of the intellectual minds of her area, pagans and people who rivaled her in terms of different religions. And she would always find ways to put them into their proper place. In other words, she would always show that Christ triumphed over everything. And so she was really given a great amount of respect because of her intellectual capacity. She reminds us, serves in that capacity, of the message that we see in today's epistle, that in Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor, slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, but all are one in Christ Jesus. It's an important lesson that I think over time has become a bit dis deflected. But the early church understood full well that Christ's healing message of the gospel didn't just get sent to men, but to women also. You can look in the accounts in the Acts of the Apostles, and you can see, for example, people like Tabitha, who is seen as a great leader of the church, and that when she dies, it causes great suffering and anguish, so that they come and they heal her and bring her back to life. St. Paul speaks of Priscilla, and there are others that you can think of, even the myrrh bearers, the ones who first beheld the resurrection of Christ. So in all of this, we see that the church makes no real distinction between man and woman. Now that doesn't apply necessarily to the priesthood, but when it comes to matters of spirituality and matters of spiritual guidance, one can go to an abbess or to nuns at a monastery just as easily as they could go to an abbot of a monastery and the monks that lived there. 
So all of this is meant to be complementary one to the other. There is no one that is more powerful than the other. I think also culturally we, we have this perception that priests and bishops are somehow more powerful or more um, or higher up. I don't know um, what the right word would be. But seen as more um, pious, I don't know, it's not the right word either, but having more authority, more power than women do. And I can honestly tell you as a priest for 20 some years that there are times when you can certainly exercise some form of power, but mostly the life of a priest and the life of a bishop is one of service. It's one where your time is not your own, your phone is always on, you're always needed here or there. Um, there are times when um, I've been through whole days without any sleep at all and so on. My point, not to overly digress, but my point is that a lot of times I think we see the hierarchy in terms of power structures, but in reality in the Christian church, there is only one in Christ and all others are his servants, all others calls them friends, but all others live to serve Jesus Christ. So there is really no distinction between one who is Jewish and one who is Greek. And they both receive the same gifts from Christ. There is neither slave nor free, because all of us are servants of Christ. There is no male nor female. Both are called to serve Christ in the same capacity. So St. Catherine serves as this great example for many women in terms of her abilities as a great logician, but also as a martyr in Christ, because ultimately her arguments and her debates led to her own persecution and ultimately her own execution. So we give thanks to God for her life, and we look to her example and the words that she uttered so that we may find inspiration and guidance to live out our own lives in this time, which is full of distractions and, and confession and, and confusion, um, just like every other age. So we remember St. Catherine, we give thanks to God for her, and we pray that she will pray for us and guide us in the things that we do. So may God bless you and your family today and always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, amen. I pray you have a great day. Thank you for joining me. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.